The 2018 movie Annihilation is now up on Netflix, so I thought this would be an opportune time to make a comparison video of the movie to the original 2014 novel by Jeff Vandermeer. Like any adaptation, movie makers must make changes to the original source material to adapt it for the screen, so this is not a critique of the movie's adaptation's quality. I like both the book and the movie. I think Alex Garland did a wonderful job with his adaptation, but the two versions are quite different. This video contains spoiler for both the book and movie, so spoiler alert. The first thing that jumps out to me with the movie is that it names its characters. In the novel, all the characters are referred to by their roles in the mission. There is the biologist, psychologist, surveyor, and the anthropologist. One missing character being the linguist, who backs out of the mission before the story even begins. I think this is hinted in the movie, where there are five members of the expedition team, instead of the book's final four. The roles that each expedition member plays in the mission is also more specialized and plays more of a significant role in the overall story. Each expedition member is really defined by their role. There is little to no personal details about other expedition members, except for the main protagonist, who too remains a bit of a mystery throughout the whole story. The protagonist is the biologist. She refers to herself as such, and we do not find out what her name is throughout the story, creating a barrier between the reader and the main character. I think this is a wonderful choice by Jeff Vandermeer, for it immediately denies readers a personal connection to the protagonist. We are reading the story as journal entries as the biologist explores Area X, and she is quite guarded on personal details. She really seems to prioritize her role as a biologist first before anything else in her own life, though her job is a huge touchstone in how she defines herself. The biologist is also an unreliable narrator who withholds a lot of information from the reader, choosing to avoid and obfuscate details, especially truths about her past before coming to Area X. It isn't until much later in the story that we will find out some personal details about her. Her time at Area X becomes increasingly more harrowing, and she will become more vulnerable for the readers. In the movie, all the characters are named. Natalie Portman portrays the biologist who is named Lena, and her husband is played by Oscar Isaac by the name of Kane. In the film, the women interact with each other a lot more closely than they do in the book, with the exception of Dr. Ventress, who remains emotionally guarded from the other expedition members. There is far less interaction between each of the expedition members in the book. They really only interact when necessary, and they do not talk about anything personal as part of their mission and training. The choice for an all-female expedition is also another experimental feature to see if Area X would react any differently. In the movie, the women have a lot more lines of communication amongst one another. They discuss their past and are more open about the reason why they volunteered to come on the expedition. Each member seemingly has suffered great trauma in the past and has come to Area X as broken people, searching for something more than what they can find in the outside world. It isn't until the midpoint of the movie that the effects of Area X begins to degrade their relationships. The movie portrays the protagonist, Lena, more intimately for the audience. Some of the first scenes of Lena is of her privately grieving over the loss of her husband, Kane, in their empty home. Lena is also more conversational with the other characters in the movie. While she does remain guarded to a certain extent, she does willingly share some details of her life with the other women. Lena's main motivation in the movie to enter Area X is her husband, Kane. She is determined to save him from the mysterious affliction that he is suffering from after his journey into Area X. She is also trying to redeem herself out of guilt for sleeping with her co-worker Daniel while Kane is away on missions. Lena seems to have an urge or a drive for self-sabotage as she seems very much in love with her husband but still chooses to risk it all by having affairs with somebody she hates. This in turn creates a vicious cycle that pushes her husband away from her. When he leaves, she becomes lonely, so she cheats on him, so she won't have to feel alone, resulting in Kane signing up for more missions, 
as a way to get away from her or punish her in some way, finally resulting in him choosing to enter Area X. From Area X, he returns to her as an empty husk of his former self, now cold, distant, and dying. This is when Lena becomes more devoted to him than ever, choosing to go into Area X in hopes of finding a possible way to cure him. Or perhaps this is another one of her self-destructive urges, and she feels compelled to enter into Area X so that she may never return, perhaps another subconscious way of self-destruction. The biologist in the book isn't as easy to read or understand. It is clear in the book that the biologist has a great love for what she does. She often goes into great detail when she talks about the beauty of Area X and the strange otherworldly effect it's having on the environment. The biologist also defines herself by her profession, seemingly prioritizing this over other parts of her life, including her own husband. She is a naturally private person and is quite self-reliant, causing great friction between her more outgoing and extroverted husband. The biologist shuts her husband out of her own personal inner world, choosing to sneak away from him not to have affairs like Lena does in the movie, but to enjoy private moments when she can observe different ecosystems that she has found. The biologist is much more of an intrepid explorer than Lena, choosing to join the mission into Area X, not only as a way to find out what happened to her husband, but also for the opportunity to explore different ecosystems. Area X is also portrayed quite differently between the book and the movie. It is more clearly defined in the movie by a visual barrier. This is referred to as the Shimmer. The Shimmer acts as a barrier between the outside world and Area X. The Shimmer hints at the idea of refraction within Area X. Josie theorizes that Area X is essentially refracting biological material in itself. This is visually hinted by the Shimmer itself, with rays of light being warped and manipulated into seemingly impossible waves. In the book, Area X is not as defined. There is no visual barrier that would signify where Area X really begins. Those outside of Area X can only estimate the growth of Area X by observing the subtle and not so subtle changes to the environment. In the book, Area X seems to be trying to change everything it comes into contact with, assimilating and co-opting organic and non-organic material. Area X is able to move, manipulate, and even create structures in ways it sees fit. In the book, the structure the biologist calls the tower is a location of great significance. It is the first location the 12th expedition really explores. Interestingly, the biologist refers to the structure as a tower, even though it is more of a tunnel for it burrows into the ground. Her perception of the tower is very different from the other expedition members. The biologist is quite taken with the tower and is strangely adamant about calling it a tower hinting at how her perception and mental state is being affected by Area X. This brings up themes of altered perception within Area X, where Area X might be communicating or co-opting thoughts. The tower also seems to be Area X's own inverted version of an existing structure of the lighthouse. The tower does not appear in the original map that the expedition members are using, hinting at its creation by Area X itself. It is also not just an inanimate structure, but it is perceived to be breathing by the biologists, hinting that it is biological in some manner. It seems like Area X is creating biological replications of original inanimate structures. Area X seems to be tailoring the land to its own design, but not without influence. There seems to be human influence in its design, hinting that humanity is being integrated within Area X. Also, as if Area X itself is also being changed by its contact with humanity. The strange creatures in Area X are also different between the book and the movie, with the bear being a major standout in the movie. The bear is a terrifying predator that is able to replicate or assimilate parts of its victims. When it kills and eats Cash Shepherd, it is able to replicate her voice, using it to attract and kill other expedition members. Other creatures in the film are the hybrid shark alligators and the deer and plant hybrids. These hybrid creatures seem to be spliced together, 
mixing genetics from animals and plants. There are also plants that grow to mimic the human shape, and even humans who turn into plants like Josie. The creatures in the books seem to be more otherworldly and more alien in design. One of the main creatures from the book is called the Crawler. The Crawler is a mysterious creature that roams the tower. It is able to write English, and it does so by scribing on the walls. The Crawler's medium for writing is biological. It is using fungus-like growth to form words. The Crawler is a slug-like monster that is beyond normal human perception. The description the biologist gives is of something completely alien. She even says that it is hard to look upon the Crawler. The biologist believes that her brain is filling in gaps due to her eyes inability to fully detect what she is actually seeing. She does note that she believes she sees the face of the old lightkeeper within the Crawler, hinting that the Crawler too was once human. The Crawler also seems to have some sort of psychic ability, for it seems to probe the biologist's mind, which causes her agonizing pain. The Crawler seems to be caught in some sort of loop, a cycle, writing passages on the walls of the tower as it descends and ascends like clockwork. When it is disturbed, it can act out violently, as seen when it kills the anthropologist who was killed when she tried to obtain samples from its body. The moaning creature is also another mysterious creature that only appears in the book. Similar to the bear in the movie, it does make human-like sounds, except for the moaning creature, it moans loudly, hiding amongst the marshy reed. The moaning creature remains hidden for most of the book, but it does try to hunt down the biologist. It hunts within the marshy reeds, and seems to be keeping an eye out for the biologist, waiting for her to enter. The biologist does note that the moaning creature seems to have a human face, or part of a human face. The biologist even seems to recognize the face, saying that it looks like the psychologist from the 11th expedition, the expedition before hers. This hints that the moaning creature might have been a mutated human, or potentially a failed double ganger that Area X had created. Speaking of double gangers, the concept of double gangers appears in both the book and the movie, but again in slight variations. In the book and the movie, the husband returns as a double ganger. Both appear in a dreamlike state and both end up getting sick. Where it differs is that the book double ganger dies, while in the movie, the double ganger remains sick until the end. The double gangers essentially walk home with no memories of exactly how they disappeared and reappeared. They seem to be able to transport themselves out of Area X and proceed to return home to the human world undetected, hinting at extraordinary abilities. In the movie, only Kane returns, but in the book, multiple double gangers return to the human world and all succumb to their sickness. It appears like the book double gangers act as scouts for Area X, but cannot live outside the area for extended periods of time. In the book, the biologist's husband witnesses the emergence of his own double ganger coming from the tower. The biologist's husband's fate remains unknown, for he does not leave Area X. Instead, he chooses to move up north. He leaves his journals behind in hopes that his wife would find it. In the movie, Pain is driven mad due to his extended stay within Area X and chooses to end himself. Then he is replaced by his double ganger. Lena is also confronted by her own double ganger, seemingly an incomplete one. It mirrors her action and begins to take form, but she is seemingly able to trick it into self-destruction using a flare grenade. However, the Lena that leaves Area X seems changed, hinted by the Infinity Tattoo on her arm. This seems to be a hint of the inevitability of Area X, and how it will slowly but inexorably change everyone and everything on Earth. The shadowy government agency in the book and the movie is called the Southern Reach. The book goes into much more detail into the organization than the movie does, but the organization essentially serves the same function in the book and in the movie. Some major revelations about the organization is that it seems to be more nefarious when it comes to getting results. 
This is hinted at the use of hypnosis and subterfuge to force compliance from other expedition members. It is even hinted that the biologist's husband was probably convinced to join the 11th expedition through hypnosis during the interview process. The biologist herself undergoes hypnosis as part of the mission by the psychologist. It is sold to the expedition members as a necessary part of the mission, as a means to transition people in Area X, as the transition between Area X and the outside world can be dramatic. But it really seems more as a form of compliance. Each expedition member is programmed by the psychologist with secret words that would force a desired action. Using these pre-programmed commands, the psychologist is able to force expedition members into doing her bidding like puppets. She even forces the anthropologist to gather samples from the crawler, resulting in the anthropologist's death. The Southern Reach also seems far more knowledgeable about Area X than they initially let on. They have been conducting far more experiments and have sent far more expedition members into Area X than they initially tell other members. When the biologist finally arrives to the lighthouse, she discovers far more journals left by other expedition members, proving that her expedition, being the 12th expedition, had to have been a lie. Something that is a major plot point in the book, but not really mentioned in the movie, is what the biologist calls the brightness. In the book, the biologist is infected with spores coming from one of the organic letters that the crawler was writing on the walls. It slowly infects her throughout the book, giving her increased strength and stamina, and even mental fortification against hypnosis. But the brightness does begin to overtake her, mentally and biologically. She will struggle to keep control, but it is an inevitability that she will turn into another creature within Area X as she slowly loses her human form. With her infection and the discovery that her husband is still alive, the biologist chooses to remain within Area X, following her husband up the coast. While the movie never really mentions anything about the brightness, I do believe that the idea of the brightness is integrated into the movie in different ways. A potential hint of the brightness can be seen near the end of the movie when Lena enters the cave tunnel under the lighthouse. Lena discovers Dr. Ventress in the cave, and almost immediately, Ventress begins to convulse, and light begins to spew out of her mouth. As she does so, her body seems to be consumed by the light, slowly melting her away. Only the light remains, and it begins to take cosmic shapes, reforming into one singular hypnotic shape, resembling an open eye. In a trance, Lena steps close to the eye, and it seems to be able to draw a single drop of blood from her. It uses her blood to take a humanoid form, and it begins to form what is an incomplete doppelganger. The skin has a shimmer quality to it, hinting that there is a link between the creature and the shimmer wall. The doppelganger is able to disappear and reappear within Area X when it cuts Lena off as she tries to escape the lighthouse. It begins to mimic her action, but is acting independently as its own entity, for it does not replicate all of Lena's actions or intentions. For example, when Lena steps back, the Lena doubleganger steps forward. It is replicating her action of walking, but it is doing so for a different purpose. It's actively trying to keep Lena from leaving the lighthouse. When Lena tries to escape, the doubleganger crushes her using its body, suffocating her on the door. As Lena falls, the doubleganger also falls, mimicking her. As mentioned previously in the video, Lena is able to trick the doubleganger when she manages to hand it a flash grenade. As it begins to finish taking her form, the grenade ignites and it catches fire. Once it does so, it does seem to begin to die. The lighthouse and other Area X creation begins to catch fire, slowly melting away. With the double ganger seemingly dead, the shimmer wall also begins to fade away, seemingly hinting that this creature is what initially crashed into the lighthouse and is the main driving force behind Area X. After the events of the lighthouse, Lena eventually makes it out of Area X. She believes that the purpose of the creature was not to destroy, but to create something new. 
but it remains ultimately unknown what the creature actually came to Earth for. Interestingly, the Kane doubleganger does not get destroyed and recovers after the destruction of Area X. Lena goes to confirm that the Kane doubleganger is indeed not her husband, but a copy. When the Kane doubleganger asks Lena in return if she was the real Lena, she cannot answer. They embrace each other, and their eyes shimmers and glows. This new Kane and changed Lena are now new life forms of Area X. These are some of the major changes that I could find between the book and the movie. I'm sure that there are plenty more, but I do want to keep the video to a manageable size. If you have any other differences between the book and the movie, please leave it in the comment section below. I read all the comments, so I would love to hear what you have to say. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Hugh, I'll see you next time.